super sexy, super duper film, baby. Oh yeah. Episode lucky number 13 coming at your mama. Ship in Dales. I'm your host, your commentator, your stud muffin, Mike of Dragon Rider Gaming. In this smoking hot episode, we're going to have four goals to satisfy you. And I'm all about satisfying you, girl. Number one, we're going to deconstruct some highways around Stutopia and lay down next to the sweet fire some new seductive roads for y'all. Yeah! Number two, we're going to terraform some shorelines. We're going to smooth out that land on the north shore, then snuggle up to that shoreline and keep it cozy. Mm -hmm. Goal number three is shipping bills time, baby. We're going to take our cargo harbor and super sexy spicy roads and get them all spread out all over that shoreline. You know it. Yeah. Then finally with number four, we're gonna slide back down to Stutopia and sweet talk some new folks into moving into our sexy seductive city, filling in all those gaps around the city. Oh yeah. So sit back, relax, and let the gaming do the talking for you. Oh mama. <laughs> All right, let's had to shake off that voice there. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, gotta have some fun, right? I mean, this is a fun game. You like to have some fun with it. So, um, before I get into the first goal here, a couple pieces of housekeeping. Um, as you may notice down here at the bottom, we have a lot more money than we left off with. I think we left the last episode with about $150,000. Uh, and now we have 1.3 million. I built this up uh, and ran the game for a while so that we could build up money to do this uh, reconstruction surgery here. Uh, so that's different. Uh, and then the other piece of information that's different is if we go into our economy here, you'll notice that everybody is set to 10%. The reason for this is because for some reason during the last episode, right at the end, my commercial demand tanked to negative numbers and so i was playing around with things and trying to figure out what the heck was going on and one of the things i did is i dropped it from 11 percent to 10 percent and it immediately shot up to 50 percent demand and i was like that's strange so i set everything else to 10 percent and we're sitting right here at a nice even 50 percent demand for everybody we're still making money you know so everything's good in that aspect and then the third piece of housekeeping that i have to point out is our traffic is 80 at 86 percent but it was not it was down around 50 percent because of this same damn intersection again so all i did is i just took this exit ramp here and ran it underground straight into the city and it only goes into the city so that everybody coming out of this starting block area needs to come out these two side legs that's it nothing more nothing crazy just made us some money so that we can do this reconstructive surgery and and be set with that so the first step that we are going to do is put in our highway system in order to do that we are going to use the roundabout builder and we're going to essentially install an eighth ring around the city uh it's going to be a double ring just as a highway would be they're going to be spaced four units apart uh, i'm going to utilize probably this intersection as a tool as a guide to help put in these little roundabout intersections at each of the eight legs around the city after we install the thing so first things first i gotta go in here and delete all of these roads but before we delete the roads there's a few items we have to move like our solar updraft tower here we're going to just slide this on down to this little industrial park uh, as well as the large recycling center. We'll just drop that down here. You saw the pollution that was overlapping onto the highway there. Not concerned about that right now. Not worried about that. It's not going to affect any citizens at this point. And the last one is this large radio mast tower that we put over here. I'm just going to drop him out in the wilderness. Off to the right where our university will eventually go over there. Uh, that disappointed some people, but oh well. 
Uh, let me go ahead and delete all these rows and get it cleaned up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just went around and deleted all the highways. We got all those other intersections, saved this one and just moved it off to the side. And now we're going to use Roundabout Builder to put this in place. And a quick review of Roundabout Builder and our option settings. If I go down to there, Roundabout Builder. So we had this option enabled before. Do not remove or connect any roads. Experimental. And what that allows is when, normally when you put down a roundabout and it goes in counterclockwise fashion, mind you, that's important to point out before we move on. Uh, usually when you put down a roundabout builder or a roundabout in default settings, everything within that outer, that ring of the roundabout, I'm, I'm drawing it out here, would be deleted. Okay, so having that option turned on will not delete everything on the inside of it. Okay, I re-enabled the option to require money. And the last one I, I enabled here is to hold control to build in opposite direction. Very crucial for what we're about to do. So uh, in order to build a roundabout, you have two options. You can go freestyle. Uh, if we're going to roundabout builder here, we can go to free cursor mode. And that way it does not require a connection. You can build a roundabout anywhere you want. Uh, but if you do have a roundabout that you have to have a connection on, you need an intersection to build it. As you see it hovering over nodes, you need a node. So we are going to utilize a node, and in order to do that, I'm going to draw, if we go into our amusement park here, I'm just going to draw a section across like this, go to the center point, make sure it's at the center, 11 units that way, 11 units that way, 11 and 11, perfect, and just draw it two, three units out, that's all we need. So now we have a center point of our city right there, so that's perfect. Okay, go back to a high overhead shot. We're going to go into our roundabout builder. And if anybody remembers when we first built Stutopia, I was given the, the dimensions. Actually, we built it three different times, right? But in the latest build of it, 1,400 units was the uh, radius of our city. So when I go into the center here, sorry about the flashing, and I hover over that little center point in the middle of Stutopia Central Park, we have the outer ring of our city. Um, whoops. I wanted to go this way. So what I want to have happen, and I'm going to zoom in on this intersection here, is I'm going to build, I want the ramp that comes off the city here to go out 12 units and connect to this little roundabout in our intersection, okay? But beyond that, uh, if we go right to here, it's five units from the edge, from the round, center of the roundabout to the road. So we want our road then 17 units out from the center of city. So going back to the center of our city here and turning on roundabout builder, we go back to our 1400 unit radius. Uh, but before we install our uh, new roundabouts, we need to actually go into roads and select this the road that we want. So we want the three lane highway. So when we do that, it brings it up over here. We click back into the center of that. Go back to the center of our city and hover over the center. Perfect, we're there. So we need to go 17 units out. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Brings us to 1536 radius. It's gonna cost us $86,100 to put this in place. But remember I said earlier, that a default roundabout runs counterclockwise. We want this first ring to run clockwise, so I'm gonna hold down control. Boom, slap that down. Uh, if we go out of here, if I stop hitting escape to get out of there, and we look at our roads, turn on arrows, we can see that it's running clockwise. Okay, perfect. That's excellent, we're gonna go back into roundabout. We're gonna go up another four units to 1568. We're gonna not hold down control so it runs in the opposite direction. It's gonna cost us $88,200. And that one is now in place. And as you see, they're running different directions. It's perfect. They're a nice spacing, even spacing all around the city. That looks phenomenal. Okay, so we have both rings in place now and they're going the different directions. As you can see here, we'll turn on the green arrows. You can see that nice and clearly, nice. And the other thing I did is I went into each one of these endpoints and just drew a road out about 10 units out so that we have something to line up against when we go to put these intersections back in place. So let's take a look at the intersection that we have off to the side over here. 
Uh, as you can see, these are curved as they go around the city naturally, but these are normally straight. So when we put this uh, roundabout back in place over top of this highway, it's going to look a little funky. So we're going to have to adjust the legs and stuff. So I'm going to take out these center roads because we don't need them. So we can just select what we need here. We need the ends or these on ramps, I call them. Excellent. So we go back into Move It Mod. We're going to select everything that's here. Selects all those nodes and we're going to copy it. We're going to bring it over here. And hovering it over the highway here, kind of centered on everything, we can see that we can easily line it up to that road. But if I go over the road itself, you can notice that the east and west nodes there, let me get a little closer, are a little bit off. So I'm just going to take this and turn it a little bit. I think that's too much. Right about there. Does that look right? Yeah, that looks right. So I think that's a little bit straighter east-west wise. We just need to come and hover it over the city here, line it up with the center of that road, of the of this road coming off, the stem, I'll call it. Right there. And I think that's pretty, pretty darn good. Now, the other thing we need to do, obviously this road isn't gonna connect because it's underneath, right? So we need to connect these ramps to the highway. But if we look at the ramps now, they look very close at the top here, farther away at the bottom. So again, we'll just use Move It Mod and move those up, get them a little bit straighter with, it, with how the road is aligned, which will allow us to install that ramp a little bit easier, right? Yeah, we'll just leave this one like that. It should be like that in all actuality. Maybe we do shift this entire thing down some. That's pretty darn centered there. No, I think we'll go with that. And that should allow us, when we go in here to our roads and highways and our on-ramps, our little single lane on-ramp, switch it to our curve tool. When we go to put these in, we'll go five units out and come five units up and connect that one just happens to connect to a node but it'll look something like that just like it was in the old one right so i'm gonna take that out just to make it ease of selecting things go back into move it mod we're going to select all these nodes again we're going to take out the road nodes so we have all eight of these each four of the stems we're going to copy that and then I'm going to go around the city and put these in place. And I will be right back. Okay, so that's all eight of those installed. We did a bunch of things here, okay? So we installed our on and off ramps onto the highway. We installed our three-lane one-way road coming in and out of the city. Uh, in the process of doing that, I destroyed some of these pedestrian bridge crossings. So I put those back in place, copied some other ones and put those back in place. We did lane mathematics here in which we dropped from three lanes to two lanes, gave it a dedicated off lane here and two lanes going through and it came back to three lanes. And using traffic manager, we went in and made sure we gave everybody dedicated lanes coming onto the highway on each side. We set up the roundabout. So the roundabout is all set up with the priority signs as well as the speed limit. We dropped the speed limit of the roundabout, which was at 65 to 50 miles an hour. So those are done for all the intersections all around the city, and we are good to go for that. Step number two is we're going to connect up the highway system and these old road systems and get everything back in place so we can turn the city back on and start building it. Uh, however, I think what I'm going to do here in looking at the way that this is set up now I'm going to connect this highway into this intersection slash roundabout and this highway into this intersection slash roundabout. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to buy a few squares. I'm going to have to buy these two squares and at least one over here. I think I can get away with just one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. This one's going to cost $32,000. This one's going to cost $32,100 and this one is $33,900. So not too bad. $100,000. We're down to under a million dollars now. But that gives us the ability to change this one and go all the way in here. So let me get that set up real quick.
Excellent. So there's the two highway systems coming in from the side. We're going to connect this one up, these roads, and we'll be all set. Okay, so now we have our entire highway system in place. We got all of our roundabout intersections in place each highway. So the southern highway is going to connect into this one. And they can split off east or west, or I guess uh, that's more so a southeast northwest. And then this road comes in from the west, comes straight into the city here and connects up. This one comes in straight in and connects up. It's very likely we're going to move these again at some point, uh, depending on how we do our other builds in the other areas. But before we go any further, we're actually going to kick this into gear. We can kick it in gear now. Cars are going to disappear. They're going to go wonky. They're going to figure out how the heck they want to get around this city real quick. And the first thing we need to do is we need to come in here and start filling in our first pie section here. Uh, I'm going to do this first one on camera, and then the other ones I'll just do off camera and come back to it. Okay, so we have the whole first si section filled in. We're gonna fill, skip each one, we're gonna do every other one, and uh, we'll come back and do that. But for right now, you know what time it is? Ho oh, ho ho, Shippendale's time, yeah. All right, so we first have to terraform this. And the reason we need to do that, if I go into transportation here and go to boats and click on our sexy cargo harbor here, we see we can line it up against the shoreline here, but where I want it is I really want it out here. So we just need to extend out the shoreline a little bit, give it a little space to get out there. And uh, we also want to build this area out just a little bit more, extend this out so that we can get a road and just some residents along here. Nothing special, just some residents along the water and such. So we go to our landscape builder, our level tool, We'll select a nice flat area inside here, get a nice big brush size, drop our brush strength, and come in here and just level that out. And we're gonna bump this out. Try and do it slowly so that the water does not rush back in at us. Right? Do that. 
We're pushing it out slow, nice and slow. That's good. There we go. We got to give that time for it to reset and, and understand where the shoreline is. But in the meantime, we can come across here, start bumping this out as well. We want to go real slow on this so it doesn't have the water rush back in on land on us here. Bump it out, bump it out a little bit more. We got a little bit more. I want a full circle length, if you will, in this area. Give it a little bit more unique curvatures and stuff so it's not just a straight piece, right? And I think that's enough time. Let's go in here and check this. Can we get it there? Oh yeah, that, that looks good. Could go out just a little bit more, but I'm pretty satisfied with that. That looks pretty darn good, honestly. So I'm gonna stick it right here at the, at the peak. Get it nice and straight. And boom, Shippendales is in. What's our level like? That looks good. It kind of dropped down a little bit. I was hoping it didn't do that, but that's fine. Oh, I see why I did that. Let's, let's redo this. Let's redo this. We can go back into landscape and go with a smaller brush size. And then we can just nudge the top of this land out some, right? Which will give it a little bit more of a sharp edge on it. But it will allow Shippendales to, and we can also bump it out a little bit more. So straighter there, okay. Come down here and just kind of nudge all this down that'll work go back to a larger brush here and just nudge that nice all right let's see what that looks like yeah we can put that right to the edge i like that stick it over this way a little more nice right there and that should be nice and level with the top now it is that's great and that's a good height and everything there perfect now, my plans for the area is to have the main on and off to the cargo harbor come off of this entrance here, this intersection. But I also want to have residents around here along the shoreline and such. So I want the road to come off here, snug along and hug this highway edge and loop in and loop out. And then we're going to put like our little battery system in place. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so there's our little system that we're going to put in place for right now. Basically, it comes off the highway here on a four-lane two-way road. Comes around here, and then at this intersection, it drops to a two-lane two-way road. So right here is where we're going to branch off, probably, and go into our residential area and such around here and have like a little, little mini town here and residences and stuff down here. And I don't know how we'll get the residents over here other than just off this, this side of the bridge and probably bring residences left and right of that intersection. And then this is just our little queue line. It's a single lane road that comes in here, winds around, comes into the harbor, and then comes out of the harbor. So two other things we need to do here. Number one, he needs water. So let's get this guy water. I think we can do it with this one. Probably not. But we'll extend this all the way up. We need the water up there for people anyway. We'll just extend both of these up to be done with it. That did get him water, but what the heck. So now he has water. But also, if you look at the lane that comes with the cargo harbor, it's a two-lane, two-way road. Or one-lane, two-lane road? Two-way road? Whichever. Whatever. But if we use this little tool, which I haven't used yet, this is called Kyle's Touch This Mod. It turns green here when you select it and you hear the sound of it clicking when you do it and now it's red. That just means that I can go in and replace it with whatever I want. I'm going to go in and upgrade this to a one-way road and then just reverse it. And boom, just like that, we have a solid one-way road coming in and going out. The other thing we need to do is probably adjust the speed on this. Uh, yeah, these are 25 and this whole network is 20. So I'm going to bump this to 25, hold shift and you can do the whole thing. And that just turned that entire system into 25 mile an hour. That's good. And then up here, when it gets into the four-way roads, it's 30 miles an hour coming up to the ramp, and then they can get on and do their thing up there. So that's perfect. 
The other thing we want is to not have them turn left here. <laughs> we don't want that. And I was thinking of actually bumping this around and making this a little bit more curvature. Match this curvature some. So, where's my nodes? I got a node here. I bring that down. Bring that down just a little bit. And then I'm going to turn everything back on. And a little trick if you don't know with Movement Mod, if you double click on the marquee selection, it reselects all the items. So, just a little. Just a little tidbit there, right? Bring that down, let's bring that down. So that kind of curves in and curves back at a decent rate. Yeah, I like that, that's good. Brings it down close to the highway, kind of curves along the highway a little bit more evenly. Excellent, ship and Dales is in. Do we have any ships? Where's our ships? Any ships? No ships. Okay. So it's up and running, it's operational. We'll see if we get anybody coming in and out of there. It may actually discourage trucks from coming in and dropping off cargo here, only from the standpoint that it is a long network system <laughs> that we have in place here. So I don't know. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna grab that large recycle center and I'm gonna move it up here. Um, if we look at garbage coverage, let's just go into garbage real quick we look at our coverage of the city it does extend out here but you see it t it really turns gray once we get out into this area so i don't think that they're going to service garbage very well there plus if you look inside the city we got some garbage areas that could use some help there as well so by moving this to that upper shoreline i really think it's going to provide people with some garbage collection that is sorely needed we're going to stick it right here And then they should, going back into garbage, look at that. Now it's nice green coverage on this side of the city. That's great. Hark, look what I see. A cargo ship coming in to deliver cargo to our transport. And we just had one, apparently. I totally missed the one that was there. Here comes the trucks out of the cargo harbor. Firing down the way, I love it. Watch this guy come in and dock. Should dock just outside of the city limit, which is perfect. That crane is actually illegal. <laughs> He's into our dock. Nice. Crane goes out, picks up the stuff. Nice. And trucks galore. All right. I like it. So that is goal number one. The highway system is in place and operational. Goal number two, terraformed Shippendales. Goal number three, we installed Shippendales in the network route there. So now we just have goal number four, which is to fill in the rest of these pie pieces. I'm gonna go fill in the next one and I'll be right back. Okay, pie section number two, or I guess it's not really number two, but it's the second pie section we're filling in. So that's in place. So what I'm gonna do while I'm waiting for residential demand to climb back up to 50% here and fill in the next pie section is I'm gonna extend Cooper Fields over to this area. And the trick to doing that is you go into district layouts and you go into industry paint areas and all we have to do is click inside of Cooper Fields here, extend it across, doesn't need to be pretty, just extend it across to this area and then draw in this area and once this area is drawn in, I'm going to turn that off so it's a little bit easier to draw it. Uh, we can, in fact, clean this up so it's nice and clean. And once this is drawn in, we can remove the district area that exists between these two sections, but they both still stay as Cooper Fields. So all we got to do is just go in here and undraw this. Back to there, and then we can extend it back out. Nice. Clean this up a little bit. Draw this back out. Nice. So now both these areas are Cooper Fields. Even though it says it over here, this entire section is Cooper Fields as well. So I'm going to drop down just some uh, additional stuff that's going to help them. What, what, what do we need here? So we need to make more flour. 
Our flour is making us some money, but not a ton. Our crops are outputting not a ton, but our animal products are making us some good coin. So I think we have tons of crop fields in place. So those guys are doing good. I think we need another flour. Yeah, we need another flour mill. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to move these medium crop fields over here so that we can build more industry related items on this side. With room to spare. And we'll be able to put some walking pads and stuff between these. But let's switch these off of potatoes. Grow some cotton. And yeah, we'll grow some cotton. And I think we've waited long enough on the slope back down, put in some other residents into that area. Oops, that one's full, that one's full, now onto this one. All right, third section complete. Go back to our Cooper Fields here. And I think, whoops, we'll go back to this side, in fact, because we wanted to put in another flour mill help get some flour going here. In fact, I want to look at my unique factories. We already got a bakery. We could put in a furniture factory for wood, a lemonade factory that takes crops and glass, but we don't have any glass manufacturing right now. Clothing factory that takes animal products, crops and plastic. Yes, plastic. We don't have any plastic. And a food factory. Ooh, how big is that? That is massive. Wow. Yeah, that will not fit anywhere. God, it could actually fit along one of these if I had nothing else there. So we'll just go back to our farming industry. We'll make, produce more flour. And we'll put the flour into this facility. And you know what I noticed we have not done, which I meant to do, was to install a whole ton of these barracks along here just to increase our efficiencies. And that'll really increase our ability to make tons and tons and tons of money. So, okay, they have more grain silos than they know what to do with. <laughs> Look at this. I hooked them up. Something fierce. They have so many grain silos, they have no idea. They got so many trucks importing stuff right now. If I look at the workers' barracks, uh, we have increased worker efficiency 145%, meaning that we have seven of these, I believe, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven workers' barracks. Uh, actually, we got nine. Oh, nine times five is 45. I can do math. Yay. I'm a moron. Um, so I think I'm going to put another set of workers' barracks along here. Probably small silos, probably no silos. We don't need more silos, for crying out loud. And, uh, and then we have, over in this section, we have a whole half of an area just with fields. That's awesome. Um, I'm highly tempted to move these fields over there as well, or just put in some more medium-sized fields over there and get rid of these and replace these with more animal pastures. I don't know. We'll see. I think that's enough time though has lapsed. I can put in the last pie piece section. We'll be done with this episode. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for this episode. Got this one out a little bit late under crunch time and uh, wanted to make it a little bit shorter. But uh, yeah, our city is cranking, man. 43,000 people. And I want to build this up and I didn't really explain why I'm pushing to get these pie sections filled in because when we go to destroy this area it's going to drop us by about 20,000 people and jobs and a lot of industry that we are currently relying on so I want to have Stutopia well established so it can handle that offset as much as possible sweet and here is Shippendales Cargo's coming in. Trucks are flowing out. I love it. We're not getting many trucks coming into the area. And I believe it's because of the length of this road. I bet if I shortened this road, 
it would change their minds. So that is going to be it for episode 13. Man, we're getting into the teens now. I like it. We laid out our gorgeous highway system around Stutopia here. Got nice intersections in each area. As we come into our new Shippendales area, look at that. We terraformed it, laid in a little grid, a little queue line there for the trucks to come in and out of. That is excellent. If you like what you see here, please give a like and a comment. If you dislike it, you know the routine. Hit the dislike, give a comment. As always, please subscribe, hit the bell notification. It looks like I have some traffic woes here at the south part of the city to clean up as well. Until next time, this is Mike of Dragon Rider Gaming. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Stay safe out there. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.